Let's podcast live. Thanks to Sleek Fleet. It's OG live just past two o'clock on a Thursday. Check out Sleek Fleet at sleek-fleet.com. You know, there's golf going on right now, Joe. There's going to be golf at the U.S. Open in not too long a time period, in a couple of months. You know what you can do? You know me. I'm not a planner. No. But I do know that we will be in Piners. I do know that it might be difficult for us to find a place to stay in Piners. It won't be difficult for us to find transportation, no. though, because you go to sleek-fleet.com, and you're going to, Tyler and his crew are going to take care of you, and not just take care of you, but in style. Also, consider that the Stanley Cup playoffs are just around the corner. You want to get to the game in style? Oh. Sleek-fleet.com is the way to go. You don't want to pay the parking. You want to no. be able to imbibe, maybe have a high noon. The youths are into the high noon, Joe. I figured this out at the Final Four. That was my reconnaissance at the Final Four for you. I'm just telling you what the youths are into. The youths are not... Congratulations on discovering high noon. I didn't discover them. I'm saying that's what the youths are into. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew they were delicious. You're also the same person that goes to Lou Malnati's in Phoenix. Okay. It was fine. At Adele Taco. My brother, Listen, JC said it was okay. Okay. JC's a Chicago guy. He said Arizona, Phoenix is known as a Chicago transplant area. This is from my brother. This is from yesterday at 7.50. He's catching up on podcasts. Oh, my God. Joe's food intake in Phoenix was abysmal. Lou Malnati's? <laughs> Del Taco? Del Taco. All, ca- all caps? All caps. He's like, there was this amazing place, Ta Carbone Mexican Grill in Glendale. How did you not go there? I didn't spend a lot of time in Glendale. I'm not going to lie to you. I was in, okay, I was in Scottsdale. I was in the carry that's fair. of Arizona. Uh, you know, the youths are are definitely not into, and I wish I wasn't into, because apparently in, in the year of our Lord, 2024, I have are to you, print are out. You, are you showing our tax information There's online? no number on there. <laughs> you, I have to print Don't out. put that down. There's no number Your on there. Your address is on there. Who cares? Our address is known to the world. <laughs> we had to file that with the state, Secretary of the okay, State. Fine. I had to print out a voucher and I now have to go to the bank and get an actual check. But Copiers Plus helped you out with but that. But Copiers Dash Plus did to pay our overlords. I mean, come on. Why can't I just pay this thing online? Uh, good point. Good point. All right. So if you can't tell, I'm 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 struggling. You're on a little the disabled list. I'm struggling for two reasons. One, it's peak allergy. It hit me a little later this year for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm on my I've neti potted twice today on the Claritin. There's, I mean, there's a there's an ooh. OnlyFans channel for that, sir. No, seriously, <laughs> should I put that behind a paywall? Like when we go to premium content, is that something that next spring people would actually want to watch? Me shoving a neti squeeze bottle up my nose and just getting that thing going? Is 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 there a market for that? Different, different market. <laughs> yes, well, I was gonna say now. This is Chip, if you, you might have heard Chip, uh, Chip Patterson in the background as I'm setting this up. So I'm playing a little bit hurt today because my allergies are kicking my ass. Um, I'm, I'm on like the full cocktail right down to the Mucinex to make sure all this stuff trips out. The other reason why I'm struggling is that today is the start of the Masters. And I'm going to be in your feelings. I'm going to be real, man. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on with the Masters because half these guys have been MIA thanks to live. And now they suddenly reappear on my television for the Masters and I'm supposed to care. Oh, I, I, but that, that's that's just me, casual golf fan, so to speak. So I decided to do you a solid. Not only am I struggling, but I'm struggling with the golf. So we bring on front of the program, Chip Patterson from CBS Sports Cover 3 Podcast. He once moonlighted as a golf podcaster at CBS. That's right. As well. And now he's here to kind of give you, he's a comfort blanket to talk about golf, amongst other things. I don't, I don't think he has swipe or no swiping for first round leader, Ryan Fox. <laughs> no, from Door the Explorer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fox. Swipe or no swipe. The fox. What yeah. does the fox say? The fox says five under through eight holes. Ah, uh, that's a that's a great call. No, I, I think there was a, a little Ludwig first round leader, but uh, but that's I think that's it for first round leader. Maybe a little Shane Lowry three ball. Yeah. You know? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, get get now a little. You're talking uh, my language. Yeah, against Akshay and JT the Postman. <laughs> Um, but you know, that's, now, I, I try a- to limit when I saw the weather, this is actually important. And I even <laughs> told some people when they were asking about, uh, outrights, I said, you know what? You're not going to get the best numbers by the time we get to the weekend. But if you let the weather pass and everything that's going to be so disjointed about these first two rounds, yeah. because if you start late, that means that our first round will be finishing on Friday, which means some people will play 
two rounds of golf or not two rounds, but finishing two rounds of golf all on Friday. So you don't want to be having to deal with mother nature with your wagering. So when it comes to like the outright winners, let all the weather pass, let everything settle, find your golfers and jump in. Now, do I know any of these golfers? The live people are there, right? Yes. Everybody, Every, cool. everybody's here. There hasn't this... been a street fight. There's no been like jets and sharks. I mean, the only thing that is interesting to me is Greg Norman's not Maria. We're going to have like a, you know, yo, Greg Norman was, uh, <laughs> he was there. All right. Yeah. He's back. Did was you, he back? All oh, right. did you see that he was hawking Rory's practice round? No. So, oh, hey, these are just rumors, okay. rumors from uh, okay. Augusta. Okay. Rumors from Augusta are two levels. Number one, he was denied tickets, so he bought them on the secondary market. <laughs> Greg Norman, I mean, that's uh, there. There is a, still a lot of petty. I don't think it's petty. I would do that. I don't think it's petty <laughs> as much between the actual golfers, but at that executive level. Oh yeah, then yeah, hundred yeah. percent. They have no time petty. for Greg. Norman. I don't. Know, I don't blame. I don't blame anybody for being mad at Greg Norman. But so anyway, somebody that was following Rory during a practice round said that. Norman showed up like four holes into it, just followed him for like three holes, and Rory <laughs> never acknowledged him. So we're off of Rory, might be in his head, you know, might oh, be psyching geez. him out. And then uh, John Rahm at his press conference, it was this was kind of interesting because he was the last big one to leave, have, right? Have you watched any of the full swing? No, I mean, probably not. What the but, Netflix show? Yeah, no, nah, I haven't watched it. It's actually very good. I know Kelly's, I'm, too, I'm assuming I, you have. I haven't seen the new season. Yeah, Kelly's too busy watching. Call I'm the going, wife. What have I been doing? I've been busy. Nah, he's been busy. <laughs> Easy. Easy. That's a hot mic. Easy. I'm going to replace it soon. All right. Easy. <laughs> no, it, it's very insightful, though, in terms of how these guys are interacting with each other and, and kind of how the whole thing is just turned into a... As, as it was featured on Netflix, the reaction universally was to the proposed merger was, what the fuck? Like... Rory in particular was like, I'm out yeah, here. Yeah, but they haven't done anything. No, since. I know. Well, it's been, like they did this thing back, what was it, last June? We're coming had, up on a year yeah, of the had, framework being in place, but they actually haven't done anything. They did the Red Sox owner getting private equity from the United States, I see. basically. I or see. however you want to frame that. Gotcha. I won't get into that bag of weeds, but <laughs> well, you don't want to be like the American <laughs> Conference, American Athletic Conference, uh, the new guy who talks about private equity and how they're going to change and disrupt college athletics. Is that what Tim Pernetti said today? Yes. I know his introductory oh, I, press I, conference was. Wait a second, we're, 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 we're gonna, Tim Pernetti. We're, what? Yeah, Tim Pernetti. <laughs> He's a New Jersey guy. Yeah. yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim Pernetti. I should, I should say well, I know his college roommate. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Tim Pernetti, quick context. He was introduced as the new AAC uh, commissioner. Yeah. And he gave like all the buzzwords. Right. The only thing that was missing is one of uh somebody responded to me on Twitter was a blockchain reference. But he <laughs> no, talked about oh that. no, that's off the that's off yeah, the buzzwords. It's crypto. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do NFTs. But yeah, he talked about how we're gonna have private equity. I'm like, oh, so you mean you're gonna have an influx of cash, they're gonna strip you for parts, and then your conference tournament will be determined by AI. Okay, cool. <laughs> totally get that. <laughs> Well, lumpy win with Sports Illustrated at that point. That's neither here nor there. So there's like there's some private equity stuff going on here. Is that what's going on? No, that's yeah, that's how investment. the PGA. Yeah, that's okay. how they. The PGA Tour did not have to go through with the investment as it was initially proposed last oh, June. Okay, because they found an American-born or at least you know housed South I guess. horse source of money. So the John Rom thing, he seemed surprised that he was not able to bring everybody together. Okay. That like the star of John Rahm, which, you know, he maybe thought, or at least people led him to believe would be what everything else orbits around because look, he's, he is on top of the world in terms of star power, but it was not enough. PGA tour kept marching and right. now he's just off there on the other tour. Well, because the problem with this, the problem with live my understanding and, and why I don't release, there's no sizzle on it. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's on the CW as they get into, you know, CW's picked up ACC games. CW is actually going to get the NASCAR package a little bit earlier. It's that these things don't matter. I like there's the, no cuts. I like their broadcast except for the shotgun start. Um, I think that they've got some products that are interesting from the technology perspective. Like, remember when, uh, wasn't Tom Dundon's AAF all yeah. about the live betting technology? Yeah, it was. I mean, I know, I'm, I know he's y'all's boy. I don't want to speak incorrectly <laughs> no, 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 no. of, uh, of no. the Hurricanes owner as I'm wearing a Hurricanes hoodie. He's, um, he's happy. You've got your that. Junior Canes, uh, get up on there. I so like it. <laughs> I, I think that there is, uh, there are pieces to the live golf experience. I just don't think there's enough golfers I'm interested in, in general. Yeah, that's and, and those are golfers that I would only look dude, for to win majors anyway. The fact that I'm still getting features about Tiger Woods tells you everything you need to know about the current state of golf. The fact that I'm still getting features about an old, broken down Tiger Woods. Oh, I can't think even that's because he's not. Like, do you really think he's going to complete this weekend? Like, is he, is he going to be able to... It's going to be tough. Be tough. <laughs> I'm not talking about making the cut. I'm talking about... No, I know. No, making the cut is going to be tough. Yeah, both. Yeah. 
because oh. you were you were mentioned this yesterday. Augusta is not an easy course to walk. No. And his body's breaking down. No. But the fact that people are talking openly about, well, what would be considered a success for Tiger Woods this weekend as a draw for the Masters? Like, hey, do you want to watch this near 50-year-old not break down and it be the best story of the weekend? That's a we're, problem for golf. We're in that doughy. The golf is in that doughy area where the NBA was before LeBron emerged, yeah. after Jordan retired, and while people were trying to make Kobe into something, mm -hmm. trying to make Tracy McGrady into something, and Grant Hill. I like that. And you're like, they're good players. Yeah, but they're really not. good players, but it's not like, you know, yeah. like Scotty Scheffler, is, his numbers, strokes gained, Joe, his numbers and strokes gained are, are only what matched is, by Tiger Woods' peak. Is that a DraftKings thing? <laughs> no, no. Different. No. Okay. <laughs> are only matched by other than the putting part, right? Ah, okay. So we we should be right now in the glory of the Jordan Spieth era. We should be right now in the glory of the Justin Thomas era. These, sure. are, these are two guys who do have a personality. But what they do? Poor Scotty Scheffler has no personality. Right, but these guys took off for live. No, no, no. They're still the PJ. Oh, they're they're, they're I can't even, struggling. I can't even tell see, you who's where. See, they're struggling. The guys who went to live who are interesting: Brooks Kepka, Cameron Smith, yeah. Bryson, and Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah. Right? DeChambeau is interesting. I, don't, I mean, I don't care who you are. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah. And I have him this week, so you're gonna hear hey, he a lot about me. Good he did. Yeah. He's two under right now. But I, those were the interesting guys. And now, to your point about that over on live and what the what are the stakes? Got it. Right? There are no stakes. So what what I find amusing in an ironic ha 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 you kind of screwed up kind of way yeah they tried live and greg norman's baby was let's have these elevated events mm -hmm. where people go make a bunch of money and, and we you know for all of those years chip we wanted to see tiger and lefty play right and we never got it right, yeah. right you know right, what i mean right, like yeah. we never got that sunday pairing we never got what we wanted so greg norman's idea 25 years ago was we'll have these elevated events. Now we're guaranteed to get the best players together on a weekend together, right? So what they've done now, the, the PGA has gone and said, okay, well, we'll have elevated events too. Which just jacked the purse up of the right. events that already right. existed. Which has kind of which has kind of um, placed somebody even like Wells Fargo out of, and Honda. Think about that. Yeah. The PGA has priced Wells freaking Fargo yeah. and Honda out of their advertising budget. But if Honda and, wants and, to advertise with us and maybe give me a no, Honda come element, on over. A Honda element only loaner, through only through the Houston Automotive Group. Of course. Um with a tape tech player. With a tape tech, please. But what they've done to those <laughs> elevated events is they've they haven't all they've done is now make the majors what we care about. Yes. And the whole premise was we want to care about more than just the majors. So it's completely backfired on both sides. It has. I'm actually cool with the rhythms of golf right now where, you know, one of the in one of the draws of the majors, in addition to them being sort of the only things that we use to mark a golf year, like everything that happens in between is just us jockeying to see on the PGA tour who's riding hot and who's not. Yeah. But the major championships are where we decide who are going to define yeah. that year in golf. And it, it was a funny thing. I think uh, my colleague Kyle Porter might have said this even a year and a half ago. He said, all this drama, all these legal challenges, it, it's making me hate all of these tours. And it leads me to believe the only thing that matters is the majors. And he was like, and maybe that's all that ever matters. But real quick to to wrap up this conversation and, you know, the ebbs and flows and cycles of stuff, which will get us to the draft and some curious things that I've been reading and hearing about Drake May. Even the majors are going to get litigated. I mean, I was reading in the Washington Post this morning in relation to Rory McIlroy. What's the one major he's missing? The Masters. He's Masters. missing the Masters, right? But not everybody was invited to the Masters because the Masters can do its own rules, right? I mean, they can they but can do what they want. All of them can do their own rules. Yeah. They can all do their the thing. own thing. But, but but with the World Golf ranking being at issue here, I mean, because that's what ultimately this is about. Live Golf doesn't count in the world golf rankings, which gives you access to these majors and whatnot, right. and other events that I forgot which golfer wasn't invited. Taylor Gooch. Was it Taylor Gooch? Been crying okay. The loudest. Yeah. Okay. Then, yes. <laughs> thank you. Taylor Gooch was the one who was whining about, okay, well, if Rory wins this weekend, it's invalidated because he didn't go up against a full field. Because I. Of those e. who, not him. Not yeah, him. Yeah, like, yeah. I, you know, but 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 again, but that's the kind of attitude that's being that's yeah. that's pervasive right hey, now. Hey, I don't know if y'all saw Taylor Gooch's Wikipedia page now, after he said that, no. but they put a bunch of asterisks on his events and <laughs> oh, called wow. them not full fields. Uh, wow, wow. So yeah, he's oh, I would say that he might be getting cooked for that one a little bit. But to your point, 
the fact that the major championships, like the Masters is run by Augusta National, USGA for the US Open, PGA of America, and the RNA, like they have you know been Switzerland on yeah. all this stuff, yeah. and they can they can get rid of the official golf world rankings tomorrow if they want if they yeah. want to, and they might. There's a really big movement to find other ways to rank these guys for a more fair field. So we're, we're talking about golf, which means I get to talk about Roback. By the way, did you tell Roback? Under no circumstances to send you a golf shirt. To yes, send I me did, a golf sir. Polo? No, I said do not under any circumstance send Joe Obvious a golf shirt. Why, sir? You 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 are not worthy. Okay, roll you are back, not roll worthy. Back. You don't know me like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm on the rollback website right now. So you're saying, well, well, well what is what is Obvious going to get? I'm going to oh. get the, I'm going to get those oh. uh, those trunks. He's going to get a hoodie. He's going to get trunks. Hoodie. Maybe he'll get something for Kelly. Okay. That's good. I like Look that. at this. Look like at all this hoodies. stuff that Roback has. But here's the most important part. You ready? What's that? I want you to scroll to the bottom of Roback.com. Stay in touch right there. You sign up on their email. You get the new releases. So all of the different things. Because you know what they're going to be doing too? They have a whole they have a whole list of stuff that they do with Pinehurst. So US Open stuff, the state, the the old North State stuff that I was telling you about yesterday. Do yourself a favor. Go to Roback.com. That's R H O back. Dot com roll back do use do, the do, promo code og20 do, 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 and do. save 20 percent on that first order and do me a favor sign up for that email list because that's how you're going to get their best stuff their best releases first Housekeeping. all right so we got the og birthday bash shady's may 3rd coming up so uh put that in your calendar it's going to be a very chill thing we're gonna have friday it's friday may 3rd 7 p we're going to be at shady's we're going to have trivia Yes, we are. We're going to have booze. We're going to have the high life. We're going to have bourbon to raffle off and some other prizes as well. Yes. We're going to have Breeze Through and their food truck out there as well. Yeah, shouts to Chris. So, Although I may save the rare for yes. the golf tournament. Okay. Since Ken, I had to break. Chris came over about us yesterday, and I, but I had to break into the uh, Ken's stash over just to show him. What Ken set us up for? I don't know if you know if you've looked at the. Uh, I have the not, latest. I have not actually. I, I almost want it to be a surprise. That's okay. why I actually haven't done it yet. Okay. Um, but have yes. you gamed out to see what the playoff potential playoff game I might have, be like? Where whether because a road playoff night would Friday night would be incredible. So uh, in talking with Jason, uh, aka OG Scoreboard, who's going to mm -hmm. do the trivia for us that night, I even floated that to him. I'm like, there is a possibility that the Canes do play that night, right? Um, and what happens with trivia? He's like, mm. I'm like, what if we did like quick lightning trivia during it, the intermissions? A hundred percent. That's a great, so that's a great view. That'd, that'd be a fun thing to do. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, it's funny. Uh, Jared over at two roosters had, had texted me. He's like, Hey, do you know the, do you know the playoff schedule? And I'm like, dude, not yet. Not yet, man. Not yet. So May 3rd, Shady's OG birthday bash. We'll give you some more details, uh, as things go along. Uh, big thanks to Longleaf for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check them out downtown. Um, parking. Okay, all my texts right here. Sir. Oh, what, what do we got? Did Adam text you? Adam, they have something cool going go on. Go to Longleaf. On Sunday. Yeah, they've got a, uh, they get like a master's brunch, right? Yes. Yeah, so go to longleafswine.com. I have not had the brunch yet. I've seen the brunch menu. The brunch menu looks off the charts amazing. Uh, I was at Longleaf this past weekend. Um, on this past Friday night to watch the women's final four with NC State. Mm -hmm. I did the pickleback shots. The bourbon prices, by the way, the per the bourbon pours are very fairly priced. So head on out to Long Beach so to check that out. That's Sunday brunch. It's 11 to 3 for the Masters. More importantly, they have golf simulators that he's Ooh. brought over. Oh, to let's the go, Adam. Lot. There we go. Okay. About that. So you get in, you get your cuts, maybe work on that uh, swing speed on your 14 wood, sir. I will it's be a, it's a giving so many wood, club you. twirls <laughs> for the, the uh, crowd <laughs> driving by on Person Street. I mentioned, I mentioned Breeze Through. Check them out, breezethrough.com. They do have a food truck. They're going to be hanging out with us. Um, but uh, by all means, don't forget about gas. Gas is kind of important, and they got good prices on gas and really clean convenience stores. So, Head on over to Breeze Through. They got great stuff, and we thank them for sponsoring Ovi's and Jillian. So I was listening to the Cover 3 podcast, catching up on things, and I have to admit, Chip, I was a little thrown off that we live in a world where NC State is actually being discussed out of the spring previews 
Oh, like on on Monday's show. Right. It was a Monday show. We you talked know, about them maybe before Auburn. It looking, was like Clemson, yeah. NC State, looking Auburn. Stuff, and I'm like, whoa, billing whoa, whoa, whoa. The Tigers. What, what planet am I on where NC State has filled the North Carolina preseason hype train? Mm -hmm. I am not used to this. But, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of look back. NC State really went hard in the portal. Right. And there's a lot on Grayson McCall who came over from Coastal Carolina. And you're kind of looking at the landscape of the ACC, and you think NC State has actually has a legitimate chance to compete this year. There is uh, like three factors that all work in. Number one is just the portal activity. Yes, and you know Noah Rogers comes over from Ohio State, where we've got the Jameson Williams story. Remember, like Jameson Williams couldn't get on the field at Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. goes to Alabama. He's a part of a playoff run. You know, you start to realize that just because you couldn't get on the field at Ohio State does not mean that you cannot play. In fact, if, if you were recruited to Ohio State as a wide receiver, you probably have probably good. Tells you a little it's something. Pretty good. Uh, everybody liked Jordan Waters last year at Duke. You know, we all had <laughs> we gave a lot of praise to Kevin Johns and sort of the way that that offense was put together. You know, you start to go through and any time that we have a team that is going heavy on the portal, you know, we call it an all in year. Like Ole Miss is in an all in year. You, yeah. you start to realize that sometimes that's coordinated with your schedule and which conference opponents you do play and which conference opponents you do not play. Yeah. Probably more emphasis on the do not. You've been in state schedules is obscenely yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, you've you've been it's on the schedule thing bad. for a while. But so are you arguing that from the perspective of the season ticket holder who's like, oh man, this stinks? Or are you looking at, I don't know, that's a great way to go seven and one and get to charlotte yeah uh, i mean it could be both right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I decided after last year which they had an amazing home schedule mm -hmm. right like so did duke by the way they did last year had an amazing oh, sure. home yeah. schedule yeah. brought game day for I, i'm arguing more from the i i have come to realize it's really just about the tailgate and I, I don't even really care if it's a good game in right. fact i don't like sitting on the bench at carter finley stadium like, i need a seat back like my back is always killing me yeah. right but it i mean it just feels like and, and i know what just happened so so r.i.p to all those other good voodoo and the ghosts and all those other things but it just feels like they're gonna lose to cal or somebody stupid hey, but that's we, college football didn't we talk right, about that right. too it's yeah. like oh yeah cal's the one that might sneak up and get you because cal's gonna get multiple acc teams they're the new pits, out there right? they're the new pit super weapon because you got to go out there and look, yeah. right now they've got um I mean, never mind. We, you, you and I can save this for win totals. <laughs> they legitimately have a top five running back in the country right now. Sure. It's a dude named Jade Knott, and the fact that he's sticking around is huge. Cal actually has NIL. Stanford doesn't do NIL whatsoever. Oh, that's right. And Ron Rivera just, was helping them with NIL. Like, yeah. Jake Spavital, the OC, who they just think, brought in, is like from the old Sumlin, Manziel, you know, Wild Wild West stuff. So thing, things could get interesting. SMU is the one that's going to be the most interesting to I, me, the, in, the, in the addition to the ACC. With, uh, I, I agree with that because they certainly have the highest potential for um they, speaking they, of they payroll showed, they, have, yeah, they certainly have they the certainly have shown forever. the willingness to win yeah they've <laughs> lots of things smu has always had the willingness to win they've always had the money except it finally took the acc in a play of desperation to finally bring them on to a conference for heaven's sake but that's another oh, conference for three years anyway. oh I just, <laughs> uh, well well whatever's left of the ACC, Here's, right one last thing on nc state so i think that what we are looking at with the wolf pack is a deep understanding of a high floor. Yes. And yeah. the debate for NC State is now the ceiling. And so it's like we always we know we're going to have rock solid defense as long as Tony Gibson is there. You know, we know that there is going to be enough that's been built up along the lines of scrimmage. There's been enough physical development of this roster. There's been enough like coaching development of this roster so that this is going to be a group that will be ready to go and will will not have huge variants. It's whether or not it is the team that can jump up to the top tier. I think the odds board says it perfectly because it's Clemson, Florida State, and Miami. Yes. And then there's a drop, and then NC State is at the top of that next group mm -hmm. with like Virginia Tech and Louisville. And they've shown you and the ability is, to beat Clemson. That is a great view of the top six teams in the ACC as we sit here in April. Mm -hmm. And so NC State's right there. Paul, on the YouTube comments, can the broken curse of NC State shit break the UNC and State preseason <laughs> football hype train curse? I, looks like it kind of. Maybe we shall see. We shall see. I actually oh, think, you mean 
Oh, because you're saying one of them is still getting attention now. It can one of can them, one of them actually break through because th this is the curse. Okay. Of, this is the curse of triangle football. Yeah, yes. yeah. it's, there, it's there always that. it's always been. School. It's not everybody. everybody oh, you know, NC, you know, North Carolina is the dark horse again. No, NC State's been in this position before. Yeah, two years ago, they're in this position again, and then they do something stupid like lose to South Carolina to start the season. Right? I mean, how many North Carolina teams have lost to South Carolina to open up the year? All of them do. All of them, including the one that won 11 games in the AC and the coastal. Anyway, yeah. I actually think that we're going to have, I called this at the end of last year when North Carolina was the hype train and NC state ended up having the better season, including just mushing them yeah. at Carter Finley stadium to end the season and just completely derailing all the conversation around North Carolina to the point where I have not heard shit about North Carolina football, not even Drake may. Which we'll get to in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're not even talking about Drake May went into last football season as a potential number one pick in the draft. Not only is North Carolina completely MIA in any sort of preseason, you know, spring discussions, which I think is a good thing for North Carolina, by the way. Sure. Because they're going to occupy the state role of, oh, you expected nothing out of us? Guess what? We're going to surprise you. I'm calling it right now that North Carolina will probably do the thing where they will ruin NC State's season next year. Watch, watch it happen. Watch it happen. But it's trickled over to Drake May, which I think is wild, to the point where I got Merrill Hodge filling up my feed, talking about how Drake May is the Ooh. kind of quarterback that's going to get you fired if you take him. Is that was that the quote was? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and then Drake May's like, I'm not even taking him at the three spot. You got Caleb Williams. You got Jaden Daniels. I'm thinking Bo Nix. I'm thinking <laughs> something. Like, wh what is happening? And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what is it about this is this is why I wanted to bring you in? Because you guys, you and Bud and Danny, you all you all talk about college football because you're seeing this with JJ McCarthy. I was thinking of the other quarterback that's getting a lot of love now. Right. We're going through the JJ McCarthy cycle, right? At no point did I think at any at any point this past season with Michigan's national championship run that I think to myself, there is a first round quarterback. Right. I never thought that good, good player, good player. Yeah. Perfect for what they're trying to do. Run the damn ball and win with defense. But I never once thought of JJ McCarthy as a first round draft pick. And now people are going out of their way to tell you that JJ McCarthy is a great pick to the point where do, you mean you want to go with him over Drake may <laughs> what am I like? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills with this draft news cycle. And from watching it from a college football perspective, it's fascinating to me to go from, we watch these guys play to what the scouts see. Yeah. We watch these guys play. Yeah, but Merrill Hodge is not a scout. But it's not just him. I just use Merrill Hodge yeah, as yeah. like the big. Even Mel Kuyper's dropping, okay. dropping him down. Are, are we doing that now? Are we talking about these guys now? Yeah. Okay. Mel Kuyper is just like a conduit. He's like a filter, right? Like he's not out here telling you who's who. He's telling you who the agents are telling him. Who's yeah, who. yeah, yeah. Or his his maybe even his front office source type people. Mm -hmm. I think Merrill Hodge is like trying to make it like he's the quarterback evaluator. He's the talent evaluator. Yeah. Chris Sims does a lot of this too. Yeah, he does. Where they're like, okay, this, this is this, this is that. And the truth of the matter is, they have content to fill. Yeah, like, I, that's, 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 where we're that's at. what this is. Yeah, that's where we're at. But I also think the truth of the matter is, you could sit here and go hard at whoever you want. But if if you end up with you just made, you, meant, you mentioned a coach at Cal. If you end up with the right guy in the NFL, guess what? You're probably going to be pretty good. If you end up with the wrong guy, a.k.a. Frank Reich out here running, you know, yeah. read option out of the gun, not giving your guy a chance at all, throwing a, you know, a broomstick and a mop and, and MacGyver in the paper clips, you're in trouble. I mean, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like Andy Reid is literally worth his weight in gold. So, Literally. I mean, y'all have talked about how the on any evaluation card, the evaluators have to fill in both sides of the card. Yeah. There's half the card for positives yeah. and half the card for negatives. And really, really talented prospects, it ends up being so hard to come up with the negatives that everybody ends up doubling down on them. So with Drake May, he is not a flawless prospect. No, he's not. He had performances, and I, I kind of mentioned this to you because I've heard this is a one, because you and I, you and I were texting about this before you came in. Right, this. one thing that I have heard, which I will lend some credence <laughs> to, is that some of Drake May's questionable throws were against bad defenses, yes. and sometimes these tape nerds watch all these other quarterbacks, you know, rip up a defense, and they're like, "Well, how did how did UVA fool him? Yeah, what 
what was that? And there were some drops in that game. I'm not, I am not going to relitigate yeah, there's, every single throw there's, there's, that was made. But there, there's drops. There's questions about what kind of offensive scheme that they were running. How is that going to play? We're in the in the NFL. There's the all that App kind of stuff. State game was a little bit of a mixed bag. It I know was. that you know Adam Smith. I remember was on your show after that talking about how he's like, well, he was checking into runs. He was making great decisions at the line of scrimmage. I, I'm not going to relitigate. But if I was to take a scout who is going to say, you know, there there are some problems with Drake May. The one thing that I've heard that I will lend some credence to is that when you just watch all the cutups, some of his bad performances or at least bad moments were against bad teams, and that would be the only alarm bell that I would have. I think there's a bigger I think Drake May. I think Drake May. I think obviously was better his first year. Okay, let, let's get that part out of the he way. Was. He struggled last year. There were parts where he struggled last year, but he's a. Uh, you cannot like his stock as a as a as a prospect. I'm, the I'm family, in. Yeah. the lineage, the ability, the the natural frame. Like Jaden Daniels, to me, I I had questions last year about Bryce Young's frame. I have questions this year about Jaden Daniels' frame. You said JJ McCarthy. He has an unbelievable arm. I don't love his frame. No, he's you know not the funny? biggest guy Drake in the history May of the world. Could still be the second pick. It probably should be. I think he should be. Right. Like, I just, I, that, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit like a, wary of the roller coaster. But here's, here. here's actually what's going there's on. There's a planet where I'm on where I take, I would take Drake May over Caleb Williams. Yeah, see, there is a planet. Joe saw the nail polish and he was out on Caleb Williams. Yeah, you, you're, you're not about these. You're not about these new dudes. No wonder you. No wonder you didn't like Jared. I McCain. was joking That's with right. Dan, Danny. Was about to have to go straight to HQ. I was like, Yo, tell him you're dropping Caleb Williams because of the nail polish. Nail polish. No, okay. no, no, it hit. That's Danny's oh, brand right geez. there. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Now, here's what's really going on. Yes, there's a draft news cycle that's happening, but I also think that all these teams all copy each other. So what's the hot shit right now in the NFL? Everything's Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, right? Like People understand getting a Lamar Jackson or a Patrick Mahomes is much more difficult to do than finding... No, Matt Rule says... I know, we're just going to go find the next Patrick Mahomes, right? <laughs> all these guys believe in the scheme. The fact that... He's, how many quarterbacks... I know. He's so temper. Oh, no, we're, we're, we're just gonna, gonna draft another. Patch. Oh, did you see the That's latest plan? Did you we're see, the, draft did you see the latest one. Matt Rule where like apparently Bill Belichick paid a visit and he's like, I was embarrassed by how much knowledge he had versus me. Like, you, really? You should be. <laughs> you should be, Matt. You should be embarrassed. Yes, you should be embarrassed for that. No, the point is that there is an entire generation of coaches coming up in the NFL that do not want these unknowns they want somebody who's going to run their offense the way that they want them to which is why the jj mccarthy's of the world suddenly find themselves as the hot names and you know he also checks other boxes off about you know winning culture blah 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 but he led a team to a championship all these types of things um i just don't know if those guys are worth a first round pick like these quarterbacks like you you don't well it's different it's, it's, that's, weird. A different, it's different. that's a different conversation and that's what i'm saying it's like we we basically trick ourselves into convince we convinced ourselves that we have to take these guys in the first round Brock Purdy is Brock Purdy not because he was taken the first round. He didn't have those expectations. He didn't have to start day one. He kind of fell into the job. Well, he was the last pick in the draft. I think the quarterback, I think the droid you're looking for is Mac Jones. Mac Jones is another example. All of, of that. those years where Belichick refused to take anybody in the first round, and ultimately he takes one that that led to him being that was fired. not a first round, but he wasn't a first round quarterback. Right. Right. Okay. So that's where we are right now. But Chip and I, we were we were talking about this before the show started. The f the first the the rookie contract the rookie yeah, wage our, scale yeah. makes it so that you can just yeah. cycle through these guys and if you hit awesome if you don't because look how they talk about it with Bryce Young like we got to figure out right now if Bryce Young is worth what we did to get him because his rookie scale is only going to be this much look how Houston has gone about this off season going out and getting Stephon Diggs and how they're trying to build around C.J. Stroud that contract's only for so much before they get their payday. Otherwise, you end up like the Dallas Cowboys and you're stuck with Dak Prescott. Drake May has more tools and playmaking ability than any quarterback in this draft, not yes. named Caleb Williams. Yes. F like flat. Yes. It, and yet. Jaden, I, I voted for Jaden for Heisman Trophy. I thought he had an amazing college season. Not He's also been around for a long time. Yeah. I've, I've watched a lot of Jaden Daniels. Yeah. It did not all look like the 2023 season. Okay. So what are you going to get? The one thing he did in 2023 or when he was fine for Arizona State? You know, We got, what, two weeks before the draft? We got yeah. a lot of silliness still to go. We do have a lot of silliness. I mean, heck, Dimitri is doing a mock draft today on the YouTube channel. 
He's got it. he's got some like mock draft simulator, so he's just doing a Panthers mock draft. Oh, just keep every day. It? Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'm trying to go for a wide what what wide receiver am I getting today? So I haven't seen today's, but it is like it's almost very Twitch like. I was gonna say that's... you're just you're just doing football manager online, but for drafts, it's actually very funny. Um, I finally saw somebody was showing me uh someone who live streams themselves playing a, a game of blackjack, every yeah. one hand of blackjack every single day, and the bet is 10 cents for every follower that they have. Ooh. And so the hands have gotten to like fifty five thousand dollars a hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like narrating it as he plays. It. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That's better than the neti pot idea. I, I thought about you because he was the I had a coworker who was telling me about it and he's showing me on his phone. And he's like, if you go back, like the early hands were only just like, you know, 30 bucks yeah. or like a couple hundred bucks, but it keeps going as and he's Australian too. He's like, All right, you degenerates, let's settle in. And like, <laughs> I'm just surprised he has that money to do it, but hey. <laughs> Is what it is. All right, Chip. Appreciate you hanging out, man. Sounds good. Go enjoy, well. enjoy your golf. Hey, thanks to DraftKings. Check them out. Get the app. Use that promo code OG24 to get some bonus bets. So all you got to do, is download the app, the official sports betting partner of NASCAR, which is now live here in North Carolina. When you use the promo code OG24, you bet $5, you will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. I know some of our listeners have used those bonus bets and cashed out nicely. Thanks to NC State. Yeah, a big NC State pre-packaged oh, yeah. parlay nonsense. Oh, yeah. oh, and I'm yeah. like, just be careful. And then every time one of those comes up, it's like, yeah, but. All my NC State tickets cash, Chili. I don't know. What you're talking, like, what are you talking about? Well, hey, man, it's like I've done that with some of these, uh, you know, six leg nerfy bets. I'm I'm gonna get one on a five dollar Joe. I'm gonna do it. Like you shake your head at the prepackaged parlays. I love them because I'm lazy. I know. So I was like, I okay, you know what? I can see these things happening. Like I did like a really easy one on DraftKings for the Masters that was related to guys making the cut. And you even said, oh, that's that's possible. I'm like, cool. I can make twenty bucks off that. So. That's what you can do with DraftKings. It's very, very cool. All you got to do is download the app. Excuse me a second. I'm going to cough here a second <coughs> as I deal with my allergies. And use it now. Bet $5. Get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-185543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. All right. I have a I have a golf bet for you. Okay, what do you I've got? I've been for promising me? all week. Would like to enter you you enjoyed the nerfy. I feel like that that was a success. I will now introduce you to what is called a three ball bet in golf. Three balls means three players. In a group. So, for for example, for the one I like today, we have Jordan Spieth, plus 140, Ludwig Ober, plus 170, and Sahith Thigala, plus 205. So, I like Thigala, or as I like to call him, Tigis. I like Tigs. <laughs> okay. Plus 205. That means if you bet 100, you win 205. Now, the trick with three balls are, if there's a tie, you still get your stake back, plus how divided by the number of players they're tied with. Yeah. So you can still make money if there's a tie. So again, we've talked about how many outcomes there are. A win, a loss, a tie. This gives you a chance to win under two of those outcomes. So Sahith Thigala. I like it. In the three ball bet today, plus 205. I like it. Big thanks to Butcher's Market for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check them out. Thebutchersmarkets.com. Uh, they've got a lot of awesome, already marinated stuff in the case. Um, but don't sleep on the prepared meals. And of course, don't sleep on the sandwiches. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go about the business of trying the French dip. As you are. I am going to do that this okay. weekend. I'm, I, I, I'm still on the steak and cheese. That was my last trip over to Lake Boone. All right, that's fine. But I'm gonna. people said we've been sleeping on it, so I'm going to go check it. Check, go check that out. Just like you should go check out Two Roosters. Uh, I mentioned that Lake Boone Shopping Plaza Ooh. for Butchers. They've got a Two Roosters in that same shopping plaza, and they got the Kid Chef selections at the various Two Roosters. Now, what was the one with the chocolate and the and the potato chips? Yeah, listen, that uh, was serious. Two roosters. First of all, the Tuffy Tracks setting all kinds of records. Yes, number one. 
Uh, now we have because they they went for the Kid Chef series. So the one that I'm saying I, I'm trying is Lincoln's chocolate potato chip. Lincoln is a second grader. Vanilla base with a chocolate covered potato chip and caramel sauce. I love it. I'm in. Oh my goodness. I'm absolutely in. Maybe you want to move into a new home and the market's pretty wild right now. Get somebody on your side. Go to myhtr.com. Hometown Realty can help you out. Buy, sell, calculate. Again, that's myhtr.com. Uh, don't do any of this guaranteed offer stuff. Uh, you are leaving money on the table, especially with this area. It is a hot market right now. So take advantage of it. Go to myhtr.com. What are you chuckling about, Paul? <laughs> Oh, Panthers doing a mock draft every day or doing a Panthers mock draft every day would drive me to the bottom <laughs> of a bottle of the Colonel. Yeah, I'd actually go with something cheaper um, at that rate if I had to if I had to do that. But you know what? Dimitri is a sicko. So more power to him. That Brownlow lady's hanging out with us in studio. You're not doing a Panthers mock draft I, every day, are you? I love that Dimitri knew me so well that he didn't even bother to ask me if I wanted to do that because he knew. You would chuck a computer. I would I would be like, "Is are you joking? He's, do um, he's doing it every day and he's getting a sick enjoyment. I love that for, sure. for him because <laughs> do what makes you happy. Right, do what makes you happy. So yeah, check that, that. check that out on you our YouTube listen. page. Check that out on our YouTube page. Speaking of uh, things online, today was a day online <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> like today's the kind of day that I Ooh. thought to myself, threads could never, number one. Of course not. Yeah. And today's the kind of day that makes me go, you know what? I can never leave this hell site ever. From I tried the, to tell you that. From the OJ. From <laughs> I've the, tried. I've tried no, to you leave. Tr you've tried to tell me, and I've tried to leave, and then OJ you dies. You tried harder than me. I did, and then uh, OJ dies, and I'm like, oh, got to go online. <laughs> <laughs> got to go online. I'm here for the jokes. I'm just here for the jokes. For me, it was the Give whole, me all the Norm McDonald For clips. me, it was the Scott Drew spurning. <laughs> About that. <laughs> Kentucky thing. So, Woo. our friend Bronce McLean, Bronce the Fourth on Twitter, compiled this for everybody, and it's pretty freaking wild. Uh, he starts to tweet off by saying, everybody's watching what Kentucky fans are doing during this coaching search, yes. NC State fans introduced plane tracking years ago. <laughs> Facts. And I believe we were called unhinged. <laughs> but I'm sure I mean, this is that just That wasn't passion. the only reason. It was still yes. unfair, but yeah. that was not the only reason they were called. <laughs> that was not like the reason people were pointing no, 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 to no, no, as no, proof no. that they were. <laughs> so so what Bronze is referencing is when Herb Sendek left for the desert, which, hey, Kentucky, Herb is out there. Great coach. Just there you say, go. He's a great coach. Just, I mean, coaching mastermind. Just I, ask the, the Illuminati. I believe Andy Katz called him a coaching mastermind once, or maybe it was Seth Davis. I can't keep track. That was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, almost 20 years ago. God, we are old. Anyway, back in 2006, <laughs> when Herb left for the desert. A simpler time. Right. It, well, it was. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was blogging. Twitter wasn't what Twitter is. I don't think Twitter really got going until 2007, if I remember correctly. No, yeah, I always it, mark it, it, it with was Marvin. like seven, eight, nine, one of those. I joined I think, in 2009. I was going to say, I know I joined Twitter in 2009. I'm pretty sure Twitter was like a tech bro only type oh, thing, like, like an Mastodon. 06 kind of. <laughs> yeah, it is. That didn't last long for me. Yeah, it is. Try so, that. Um, you'll remember that people were tracking Wendell Murphy's train, uh, plane, boss. <laughs> what? Right. What? Right. <laughs> what? What were you trying before? And now she's trying Mastodon. Oh, no, threads. <laughs> I, I tried threads. Blue Sky this no, time around. Sky. Yeah, yeah I know. Navaj or something. Oh, Navaj? <laughs> Netting potting? <laughs> right. <laughs> you lost it. <laughs> My bad. So you'll remember back in 06, they tracked Wendell Murphy's plane. Yes. yes. And you got, you look, people act as though misinformation is a new concept, right? And I know it's easier. Oh, no, it's better than ever nowadays. I, I know it's easier to create misinformation <laughs> thanks to AI and deep fakes and everything else. But let's not forget that there was all sorts of misinformation thanks to message boards and blogs. Oh, and yeah. Like somebody reporting. would go on there and be like, my cousin's brother yeah. or like my cousin's oh. like best friend is on the training staff I, as like a student whatever and he knows that this guy is really hurt whatever yeah i remember <laughs> i remember listening to a radio show and they were this was right before sydney Lowe was officially announced as the next head coach but it 
for, I think it was Taylor Zarzer and Andrew Jones. So apologies if I got it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Taylor Zarzer and Andrew Jones were like, they got on the radio and they said, I'm hearing one last ditch effort to go get Rick Barnes. Okay. And like they were on the plane. And of course, as that's happening, no, it ended up being, and of course there's your story, your anecdote about freaking Phil Ford and Colton Tudor. It still blows my mind. <laughs> right? So, still like, blows let's, my mind. so let's not act as though all this stuff is somehow new. Right. I'm convinced. Right. I'm convinced. And I wanted to do this, but obviously, I mean, I guess we still can. But when I was cooking up ideas for a potential season three of A Brief History of Triangle Sports, I wanted to, and you and I talked about doing an entire series based on that coaching search. search. Yes. Know? Because it really did introduce a whole a lot bunch of, of different stuff concepts. That is like pretty common now. Yeah. Right down to plane tracking. A hundred percent. So as Bronze points out, it begins with a state fan special tracking of the Joe Craft plane. Yes. But it gets better. You got Matt Jones talking about Waco to Lexington flight is close. Apparently, there's TV crews at the they airport. They called the restaurant. Oh, yes. So here's the kicker. That one is like. Here's the kicker. So as Woo! everybody's trying to track the plane, Scott Drew tweets out, great lunch spot in Waco on a rainy day. No better friend and supporter than Eric Shiro at Alliance Bank. And there's a lot going on here from, you know, the the the, the chips and the salsa and looking at the menu and all this other stuff. <laughs> and People just, broke it down to see there was a there's a TV in the back episode. corner yes. of Family Feud. <laughs> so people were trying to determine if this was a old photo that he posted or, current. or a current photo. So they went and they looked. People looked up the I mean, TV listings in Waco oh, to see if Family Feud was being run okay. at that time. Let's be honest. Family Feud is usually being run somewhere. On some network. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You can find an episode. Then we get to the second best part. Yeah, Mike yeah. Rutherford, Card Chronicle. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 by Jumping the way, yeah. by the way, it's pretty amazing that Scott Drew said no to Louisville and, and Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Dude, that's a baller move, center, man. Center of the basketball universe. Baller freaking sure. move for yeah. Drew. We all so know that. So Rutherford takes a screen uh, video of a guy calling into a Discord to explain that he called the Mexican restaurant to verify <laughs> yeah. that Scott Drew was there. Let's see if I can get audio here real quick. That was cool. amazing. So the lady answers. She goes, hello. And I go, you need to tell Scott Drew to come to Kentucky. And she goes, what? I go, Scott Drew, he's at, <laughs> eating at your restaurant right now. Uh, you need to tell him to come to Kentucky. So I guess she doesn't know a fucking thing. She was like, oh, uh, so you need to talk to this person? I said, yes. Uh, she goes, what is he wearing? What is he? I go, he's wearing, I like was like, oh, uh, look at the picture. He's wearing a white Baylor polo. I was like, he's wearing a white Baylor polo. And uh, I hear like talking. She's like, is there someone named Scott here? Um, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I, say, I hear her say, someone's on the phone with you. <coughs> he goes, I'm not, I was like, I'm, I, all my life, I'm not bullshitting this. <laughs> Scott Drew goes, yeah, hello? And I go, coach, we need you at Kentucky. He's, he get, laughs and he goes, who is this? And I go, it's just a loyal fan, coach. We need you up here. Sorry to bother you, but enjoy your lunch. He goes, all right, man, that's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. That's cool. And that's how it ended. I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely like, I can't believe this just happened. This was the best thing of all fucking time. But, <laughs> so Bronze and it highlights, continues, man. yeah, it Bronze, continues. yeah, Bronze highlights how people were tracking the Family Feud to see if it lined up with the cable system in Waco. Um, and then there was the off the scent. He's like, no, wait, state we, fans walked so Kentucky fans could run. Yes. Honestly, when well, there's a Kentucky tie, because remember, John Calipari yes. was at Memphis, yes. and yeah. that's what that yes. introduced us to. The, hey, did you know that the um, PNC RB, Arena RBC, camp. no, no, yeah. RBC, yeah. RBC, RBC Center, that's RB, right. RBC Center had a 24 <laughs> 7 webcam because in 2006, <laughs> Having a 24-7 webcam was pretty cool. Yeah, you really want to see the changeover. Yeah, that was, yeah, that <laughs> was cool technology, stuff. yeah. And people were watching it like a hawk, and at like at 2 a.m., the lights come on, and there's little like fuzzy <laughs> figures walking around. Anyway, so I remember Bronze highlights oh. how people were going to airports and they were trying to like throw people off the strength, off the scent. Here's somebody from uh from a Kentucky fan saying, This gentleman here at the airport said that I just met Scott Drew, but confirmed that Drew is here and he's in Lexington, the guy filling the plane. Uh, or the guy filing the plane said that there were news crews in Lexington, so that it was diverted to this other airport. But then <laughs> Chip and Joanna Gaines get involved. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, that part I hadn't seen. <laughs> I am fairly familiar with Chip and Joanna Gaines. They're like these fixer-upper, house fixer-uppers, right? That's all I know about them as well. They're like, yeah. they're like HGTV. Yeah. Not our old neighbors, though. It's not Hillary. Yeah. No. Okay. No, no, no. So apparently, again, props to Bronze for aggregating all of this and making it really easy to follow. 
Chip and Joanna Gaines get involved because apparently the Drews are working on a 70,000 square foot house in Waco. Oh, I'm sorry, 70,000? 70,000, 70, which you what? know John Calipari would still put his dog in a stroller and walk him is on that, that a warehouse or a house. So, right. So, like, so Chip Gaines is actually battling with Chip is battling with Kentucky fans about this. And then it continues on. People are leaving reviews on the Mexican restaurant no. website. Oh, that one I saw. That That's, one I saw. Yeah. Come on. Yes. And then, uh, you know, somebody actually went to the restaurant called Mi Casita. The employee told me that he came in around 12 and he had lunch. And then, and then finally, what we come to find out is well, that what? there what was, was he a doing plane. like an investigation? Like we know he's at the restaurant. <laughs> but what basically no, they were they didn't know if it was real or not. What oh, Scott oh, okay. Drew, what Scott Drew was doing was throwing people off the scent because while he was at the I restaurant, see. the family was getting a tour of Lexington. Oh. So the Drew family showed up on the private jet to get the tour. Okay. And then the plane went back to Waco to drop them off. And then it went off to something else. And then we find out this morning, based on various reports, that Scott Drew said, nah, I'm good. Not going. So there you go. That's your wild and woolly coaching search so, for Kentucky. I mean, my patino scratch off is still alive. Still alive. They're probably going to go to one? Billy Donovan. I'm just kidding. I was, <laughs> no, yeah. Billy's not. Billy will not take that job. I, I mean, it was the question at Louisville. Was it not? Which one? I was. I thought it was like well, because people were like Richard. I'm like Rich. What are you talking about? Yeah, don't. No. What's wrong with them? If over you want to bring, they made wanna... a good hire, thankfully. I yeah. Think, at the end of the day, yeah, I but agree. like, I agree. Come on, Richard Patino, get out of here, Louisville. What are you, you doing? Think Rick Patino really is going to come back? I do. I will be I surprised. When's the price? You're in a stop. You're in the stopgap range now, right? Like, think yeah. about it. Who? Yeah. We we've talked. We talked about this when Roy retired. We talked about this when Mike retired. Like. Who are the hot shit young coaches? That's the thing. You I know mean, what I mean? When you you, you looked at this hire, that's the thing. Even, when you look Nate at the hiring cycle, have? like but here's the thing: the final not, four now, right? Like yeah. it's just there's not a lot. There wasn't a lot. There's not a lot. Number one, number two. What is and speaking this, of voids? Remember in golf, we have a void. We have a void in college basketball there coaches is, too. There is a void right. in college basketball there coaches and to, politics. Guys need frankly. to get more proven and whatever. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like. But my, I think my generation's screwing everything up. Man. Yeah, it's true. We're supposed to be running the world right now. We we can't we can't coach college basketball. Yeah, you, you we can't exercise. We can't play golf. It's terrible. Yeah. We got nothing going on. So here's the <laughs> thing about what's happened in Kentucky was avoided at Duke and Carolina because there is some lineage that takes place. There were coaches that were able to at least guide you to the next person. Right. right sure. Right. So it all you know, things, until they got to Calipari. I mean, all, but here's the thing: all things being equal. If Roy Williams wasn't heavily suggesting Hubert Davis be the guy, do you think Bubba finds himself in a similar situation to what Kentucky's dealing with and trying to find their next coach? I don't like that. Like I, the names that people are obsessed sure. over. You make no. a run I, at I, this. I, do, you, do you think uh, they're happy where they're at? Because I, the money's really, really good and NIL makes it I, so that you can manipulate these sure. rosters in a way that you could never before. Kentucky's a special kind of crazy. I okay. do not. I do not think right. Carolina is that kind of crazy. Yeah, that's the thing. So, like, I don't. No, no not like. Not are you like kidding? Kentucky. And that's the, that's a big that difference between official. the Carolina and the Duke rival. The, the, the Carolina and Duke versus Kentucky and Louisville. You know, we go back and forth when we talk about those rivalries, but those, every, those people are a different breed of crazy up there, yeah. man. Like we, Duke and Everybody, Carolina people are not like that with each other. That no one's shooting every, anyone or taking a kidney or whatever nonsense they've done. In the, but that's there's not a, happening there, here. But there's a, there is a southern cutting that takes place. The bless your oh, heart. Oh, it's more genteel. It's genteel, 100%, but they're still going to gut you. But at the same time, like, it's not as, like, crazy. It's not as insane. Like It's it, not as, it's the volume. Right. Yes. Every every fan base has their loons, but yes. Kentucky has more. Not only do not only does Kentucky have their crazies, but you also have Pied Pipers of crazy that don't exist here. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, you have Matt Jones. And it's not like I'm not saying it negatively about Matt Jones. Matt Jones is actively engaging in the crazy. Yes. yes. Actively engaging in it because it's good for content, right? It's good for content. Yeah. So I still think, though, that these high-profile schools, I think the same thing might happen at Kansas, for all we know, Yeah, when whenever it is that Bill Self wants I to agree. go. Scott Drew's making a shit ton of money at mm -hmm. Baylor. And has a national championship. Has a national championship. Who's, who's really bothering him at Baylor? Exactly. Right. Like, yeah. what, is he, what does that, he need it for? That's the thing. Like, what for what? You know, you yeah. look at exactly. jobs like for that what? with, like, that much pressure, and you say, for what? Whereas, like, 
you know, could you make the case at Carolina? There's still a lot of pressure. Sure, there is. But like, are they going to chase? Are they going to chase you away after two years? Are they going to chase you away just because you don't? you don't get past the second round of the tournament for a couple I, of years. Like, I no, think, I know it's more than that with Cal. I'm not saying no, no, not, I, but. I do think there's a new reality to how in an, in, in NIL that the shelf life for coaches, even at that level, because yeah. as we've seen some questions about Uber, as I'm sitting there at the Duke state game in DC and their families are basically get ready to run John Shire. Oh, out on what, a did rail. You think, what did you think yeah. of that? What did you think of that email that went out? The PR email that went out? About John Shaw. I thought it was basically a reminder, like like things that you should be appreciative of, even if you're Duke. They won For, the ACC last year. They made the final eight this year. Yeah. Like that's a pretty good basement so, as we talk about basement, basements and basements and ceilings. Quick context. Quick context on that. Well, what I brought up. Get an email from Kyle Serba, who runs basketball mm-hmm. over at Duke. And Kyle's a long time SID, did incredible work at Central. Great and people. He's, he's great people. Oh, yeah. he's, he's transitioned over to Duke. Kyle. And uh, he's been great. And he puts out this email. Yeah, which I'm sure they put on their website. And yesterday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's readily available. Yeah. It's just it's readily available. Senate 445. I got it. You got it. We're on the mailing list. Shire continues to make history in the second season as head coach. I'm thinking, what? It's April <laughs> 10th. Why am I getting this email now? This is odd. But it's basically just kind of highlighting the things he's able to do in the two years he's been here. But my question was, yeah, do we need a raise an eyebrow? That's yeah. all. A raise yeah. an eyebrow. I think maybe that was a little bit of like a hey, if there's if you see but people the, complaining about Shire and saying he needs to go, there like some there's some points. there are some things to push uh, back with beyond he's really smart and knows the game really uh, well. Which but who's I think we really all pushing back on John Shire? You'd be surprised. I okay. I, I do think in this NIL era, you're going to see a quicker trigger like a professional yes, I agree sport. With I got that. you. I agree because with because the thought process is you don't need to put two or three recruiting classes together and develop them and, and get back. You could literally sprinkle water, spend enough chicken money and get yourself to the final like four. Like five or 10 years ago, if Cal had done the same thing that... The right, la- it would have been like, the, the, what are you doing? Yeah, no one, everybody like, would have thought they were insane. I, I hate to be the one who points this out and, and, and I think you know where I'm about to go. Arkansas actually had the better basketball coach in Musselman. For, I, for real. I like Musselman too. I'm a Musselman. For real. Defender he's a better, he's a better well. basketball coach. I, yeah. Now, I can hear Roy yelling at me right now. <laughs> for real. I know. Like, Joe, recruiting is part of coaching. It is. It getting, is. Players, getting players on it your is. team is part of coaching. But I think we understand now. And the one thing that John Calipari either recognized and refused to adapt to, or he's stubborn that you cannot win. And this is something that the younger coaches are going to have to understand and figure out. Like yes. John Shire. It's not just about getting Cooper flag anymore. Right. It's about getting the other pieces to go along with it. The one thing that John Calipari, which was routinely viewed as a problem for him was that he thought it was still 2012. Right. He's still like in the one and done model. Sure. And if yeah. you win one way, like I said, you can get stuck in thinking this is the only way yeah. I could win. And either you double down on that or you adapt or you adapt. And that's why I think Mike Krzyzewski will always be the greatest to ever do it. Not just because of the championships that he won, but he different. He did it different ways throughout yeah. his entire career. Uh, I'm not taking away from Roy Williams because he made it work for him for a very long time. Yeah. And you see how hard it and, is to make it work for you for a very long time as evidenced with John Calipari at Kentucky. And mm-hmm. it's not just about, and, and obviously that was the, the perpetual knock on Roy. Oh, you're just a recruiter. The truth of the matter is, it's harder to coach good talent. It, it is. is. Like, people don't yeah. get that. Like, oh, anybody could coach Kobe. Anybody can coach Jordan. No. No. Actually, no. So when you have that, that type of talent, you have to push the right buttons. You have to have yeah. them basically defend. You, you know? have to and, make them respect you enough respect to you. listen to yeah. you. And, think and ab- that's not easy. Think about, <laughs> think about Kentucky's biggest problem this year is they couldn't defend. Right. They got dotted by Golki for 15 freaking threes. Mm-hmm. Like at some point, as Roy would always say, at some point it, it clicks for his teams, his best teams. We have to defend to win this whole thing. And once those yeah. teams figure that out, it's usually January. Usually it was like, I was going to say, I was going to go to like February, yeah. March, but even so, yeah. Like <laughs> they would like, they, all they'd be like, like oh, all right, time to defense yeah. now. Okay, we're good now. Okay. One quick thing before we uh, move to some Hey Joe questions to wrap things up. Lauren, you used to be all about entirely way too early preseason top 25. Can you imagine doing that now? 
People are still trying. I saw a couple of people are still trying uh, to do entirely way too early top 25s. I'm like, the transfer portal is open, and we don't even know what these rosters are going to look like. I saw a way too early, way too early top 25 (laughs) during the NCAA tournament, and I literally almost threw my new laptop out the window in in rage. I'm like, are you kidding? Do you think this is cute? No one thinks it's cute. I love it. I, I will say this. I hate it here. I don't like, I don't like uh, the top 25 basketball. Obviously, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. The gambling odds, though, do. Yes. And Duke and UConn are your, are your, are your preseason now I, favorites. I think that's because even though UConn's going to be going through a roster changeover because guys are going to be going pro XYZ. Obviously, people will want to play there and play that's, for him. Exactly. And that's respect for Dan Hurley. Exactly. And then the betting odds for Duke are twofold. One, it's Duke. Two, it's Cooper Flag. It's the recruit class. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, too, like with Cal, it, we I mentioned like ten, like five, ten years ago, if, if Kentucky had done this, they would have been thought of as insane. But I also feel like, you know, it's, it's just a whole new world all around anyways. Like, I, by the way, I don't think Kentucky is nuts. I don't think Kentucky fans are nuts from wanting no, to move on from Cal Power. No, I'm not saying that either. I'm no, just saying not, like, not that part. what okay. would happen is people would look at the results on oh, paper sure, and sure, they sure, would sure, go, sure. why would you chase this? Just like they did. If you're comparing it to state, to state right? Like right. you would look at it on paper and go, what's wrong with this? Even for a blue blood, yep. you would look at that and go, what's so bad about the, what's going on here? Yeah, needing the that. FBI to protect the official from the Drake, May, the Luke May Yeah, game. that's a different level that's, of unhingedness. No, that's no, no. I'll, I'll give. I don't that. even remember what they were mad about. Uh, just like there was like a the second half, they wanted more calls. Basically, yeah. there wasn't like one play. I honestly, it I'm, was like a you know again, Higgins. The best yeah. part about I this is they will, think it's cute. No, that's I know, the best part no, about it. The FBI well, literally had to intervene. To, like, to be fair, like they literally get that kind of tra- like they get that kind of treatment though from the national media whereas yeah. like they do and uh-huh. it's like look how crazy they oh, are. Oh, it's crazy. It crazy look I'm... at those cuckoo fans and it's like <laughs> are we really like celebrating yes. this kind so of thing i covered like... i covered carolina the year after the the luke may shot yeah and <laughs> they're and we're in new orleans in the champions not the champ whatever it is the cbs sports classic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. kentucky was playing i think UCLA in the in the previous in the that first game, right. yeah. And Carolina was playing Ohio State, and we yeah. were down in New Orleans, and I'm sitting there, and you know, I was trying to figure out get a. It was, this was one of the first games I covered, and I'm sitting here trying to figure out what was going on. Every time Luke May touched the ball, the building was booing, and I was like, "What? I don't get it." And then I was like, "Oh." oh. And then I started looking you around. It? it was all Kentucky all fans. Uh huh. Like he's there, Christian Leitner. Like modern era. You know, other without the chest stomping, of course. I feel like that was kind of a big piece of what should have made them not care for Leitner, as right. opposed to like, right. well, what did he do other than hit a shot? Against <laughs> They're just mad. They're just mad. Yeah. If you have insane fans that are coming after you, <laughs> contact Whitaker and Hamer. WH. Lawyer. One of your better transitions. <laughs> so if you need legal representation for harassing a Mexican restaurant, call Whitaker and Hamer. WH. Lawyer. Or, you know, if you're closing on a home, yeah, if you that. have any kind of family law issues or traffic law issues, yeah. WH. That lawyer. <laughs> Do you need to? I wonder if Matt Davis over at State Farm has insurance for fans stalking your house while you're in the middle of a coaching search. Is there something for that? I don't I, know. I don't know, but Matt can figure it out. Yes, I do he know can. that. He's smart enough. Insuregarner.com, the OG insurance.com, or call him directly at 919 779 8277. He can save you money uh, by switching over to State Farm and finding ways that uh, you can not just save on your home and auto, but actually have really, really good coverage on your home and auto. Uh, yesterday was kind of a rainy day and I got a text from Mosquito Authority. They were going to come out this week to give some treatment. They're like, hey, um, it's raining. So do you still want us to do the treatment? I was like, nah, man, not today because it's raining. Don't worry about it. We'll just punt it. Cool. Thanks. We'll be back in touch. Got a text today saying, hey, Mosquito Authority will be out on Friday. Communication. That is so key. And that's what Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority can do for you. Bugsbite.com, bundle and save when you use Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. All you got to do to get this started is go to bugsbite.com.
I've made it this far, Lauren. My allergies are not completely devouring me, but we're almost there. So Ugh, my eyes have been like, oh, my eyes are off. It's, awful. it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> so we're going to get out of here on Hey Joe questions related to a series of tweets from this guy named C.W. Lambert. But okay. I received I read that thread. OK, we got Good. we got a couple texts about this. Um, I received a couple of mentions saying, hey, have you seen this? What do you think about this? So this guy goes inside the Big 12 for reference. He's one of these West Virginia guys. Greg Swaim. Not Greg Swaim. Okay. Not the Swaim dude, adjacent. Not the dude from West Virginia. <laughs> but yes, he is kind of Swaim adjacent. Interesting. Now, okay. If these names resonate for you, you're some of our people. You've been doing this for a very long time. You've listened for you're a very long time. You're of a certain time. age. Yeah. You you know yeah. all the twists and turns of college realignment. If you don't know who these people are, this there is a cohort of West Virginia people who are like somehow plugged in. Now, I understood where the initial ACC Big East stuff was coming from because it was coming from a Big East source back in the day. That's how a lot of this stuff got online back in the day. Right. I don't know where the West Virginia people are getting stuff now. And they just throw stuff at the wall, then people yeah, react to it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Swaim had a lot of crazy things that he was certain was oh, happening and never happened. So that's, I, that's the reference point. I haven't thought about Greg Swaim in ages. Yeah. And a couple of weeks ago, he added me on Twitter yeah. about how <laughs> you're, you're a hater. You're a hater. I'm like, dude, I told you, Greg. If you, if it's I told you from twenty years ago, that's then, not yeah, because that's not what he was saying. And that's then. Not you how knew it, how this was going to play out exactly. Ex Stop it! Like you've been tweeting this stuff for twenty damn <laughs> years, dude, and you haven't gotten any of it right. But cool, I'm a hater. Got it. Anyway, so C.W. Lambert tweets out: I have some legit insider information from a source in the sports broadcasting industry that I was going to write up and disseminate, but I don't have time to do that. So. I'm just going to spill the beans uh, here. This thread now, was so lengthy. He had time to do that. Yeah, you, dude, you had time. <laughs> he had time. You had time. Well, I just love it. It's like, I don't have time to do this, but here is a 20 thread uh, tweet. 20 tweet thread, like that I'm sure he edited the tweets more than once and oh, like sure. tweaked them. I'm I'm sure. Bro, just write an article. <laughs> it's whatever. Yeah. And of course, but first, do me a favor. Remember who, what, and <laughs> yeah. when. Keep track of how many details I'm sharing tonight oh my come to fruition. Because yes, all the other times you've been right about this stuff, CM. CW. So the, the crux of this is that ESPN approached FSU Clemson and the ACC about a potential settlement, allowing the Seminoles and the Tigers to leave the ACC whenever they want. But an ESPN broker deal is only possible if FSU and Clemson leave for the SEC. Why? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> ESPN is the exclusive rights holder for the ACC and the SEC. Moreover, ESPN is partnering with both the ACC network and the SEC network. Yes, we know all these things. ESPN would not lose money if FSU and Clemson are in the SEC as opposed to the ACC. The basic facts of the potential settlements are FSU and Clemson would pay an exit fee equal to that of what Texas and Oklahoma paid to exit the Big 12 plus a percentage. The ACC would retain the rights to FSU and Clemson home games, but license those rights to ESPN for SEC broadcast. Right off the bat, he goes on to ACC receiving 50%. Yeah, that 50%. one was a little... I was like, you a know what? Some of this tracks a little. Like, yeah. I could see it. ACC and then, receives 50% yeah. of the fair market SEC value for FSU and Clemson home games in both football and basketball. The percentage of the ACC receives would decrease each yeah. year of the agreement. Okay, first and foremost, Florida <laughs> State would never agree to any of this stuff based on how they're going about it. But right. this is the kind of stuff that we're dealing with right now. But I think, Joe, you and I were talking about this before we hit go live today. The premise that ESPN is not happy with the situation has validity. Of course. Yes. Yeah. It has validity. And I've talked to people in the industry about, hey, I'm guessing that ESPN and Disney, as they've tried to cut back on costs, aren't exactly keen on doling out fair share to these three schools that don't necessarily move the needle. And that was like, yeah, that's a fair assessment. But ESPN's a big company and they'll try to figure it out and there's inventory and they'll try to make it work. So the crux of ESPN not being happy, yeah, there's validity to that. But so they definitely how mad didn't are ask they? them before like adding the teams. Yes. That's really true. They yeah, didn't but, they didn't work like ESPN had nothing to do with that decision. No, because ACC was utilizing its own contracts. Like basically they're saying, this is part of our contract. We're going to utilize this. Now ESPN can make it known. You understand that that's coming out of our pocket, but of course the ACC is doing these things for their own survival and your own survival is going to be first a priority over whatever ESPN's financial situation Honestly, is. a lot of the last year then makes a lot of se more sense to me. Okay. 
just in the way that they were talked to, like the ACC as a whole was talked about on that network yeah. and everything yeah. else. It makes yeah. a lot more yeah. sense yeah. to me. The ESPN's not happy with, with the ACC, but they'll get over it. I mean, that's how also it was yeah. portrayed to me. I and again, mean, this is the, all... What, what, how would their treatment change that much? Yeah. Well, <laughs> again, I'll say that. I'll okay. say this, because I, I believe you were sitting there when I asked the question. Oh, okay. Because you got to remember when the original deal was made, and I'm not, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is just how the real world works. Right, yeah, yeah. right. You had basically in John Swafford and John Skipper, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Two UNC guys. Yes. And sure. a third UNC guy at uh, Jim Delaney. Jim Delaney at the oh, conference, yeah, yeah, yeah. conference commissioner of the Big Ten. And, and these guys all kind of made decisions like in concert. Sure. You know, maybe not what was best for the Big Ten, what was best for the ACC, what was best for ESPN, but mm -hmm. like, hey, how do we make this work? Right. We know each other. We're trying to make, like, hey, ESPN might go back as as Holden Thorpe told us and say, "Hey, can you go talk to Florida State? Hey, can you go talk to and that's Virginia?" That's something Swaff was always very good at. Right. I don't. Th and I we I straight up asked the question: Do you think this deal would have gotten made if John Swafford was still here? The answer, straight up, no, 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 no. Because no. it wasn't in ESPN's best interest. Right. So the question is: How does ESPN respond? Do they do? Are they mo are they that motivated? to move Florida State and Clemson out of the league. I don't think so. I don't think but so. But our premise all along has been, uh, sure, the SEC doesn't want Florida State and Clemson, but it's not really the SEC anymore. It's ESPN. Yeah. And if you're facing a situation where you're potentially losing valuable commodities, and Florida State, Clemson, and Carolina are valuable commodities to the Big Ten, to Fox, Right, you would then you would rather, potentially that part broker of the a threat deal. Made a lot of right. sense. To then me. you yes. would potentially broker a deal. Right. In my head, all along, I have thought that deal would be to the Big Twelve, not for Carolina. I think Carolina ultimately ends up in the Big Ten. With yeah, Virginia. I do too. But I think if you're ESPN and trying to protect your brands. Like, why would you want them to go to a competitor, right. essentially? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That part made a that, lot well, of sense. Like, that's you, like logic, you though, also, right? Like, right. that's not... You also just hit on the thing that doesn't make any logical sense in this. You know, again, I bring this up because this is the kind of stuff that there's an entire cottage industry that gets a lot of views on social media, gets a lot of views on YouTube, and people are obsessed with this stuff. So I understand why it's put out there. I try not to engage with it because I'm not looking for cheap pops and cheap, uh, cheap views, but it is what it is. If you were to do that, Let's take it at face value that all this stuff is actually coming true. Why is it just Florida State and Clemson, number one, when most insiders that you and I talk to, industry insiders, tell us it's not Florida State and Clemson that are the prized brand? Right. That's it's, what I... The, yeah, UNC. I was surprised the thread didn't mention UNC like number barely one, at all. Yeah. Number one. And that's typical of the Big 12 who are obsessed with Florida State and Clemson. Yeah. And number two, if they do this, what's to stop North Carolina, Miami, and others to go, oh... Okay, so you're going to hold us to this That's contract, the thing. but like, you just negotiated a settlement to get them to the SEC? There's no way us? that that would legally hold up no, at that point. Like, the UNC could then just probably just go. I feel like I'm sure they could get out of the contract at the that point. The bottom line here is that, to your point, Joe, where there was at least an understanding of... Uh, 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 Jim Phillips did a interview, I think it was with Andrew Carter of the News and Observer, and he brought up the fact that Jim Phillips brought up the fact that he was roasted for his neighborhoods conversation, gated communities and whatnot. And he was right in that if in order for all this to work, everybody has to have a work in concert. Yeah. He's not wrong about no, that. No, he wasn't. But this is also not 2005. Right. It's not how and it's what, going. And what we have now is everybody doing things for their own good to Correct. basically save themselves. And I think that we're missing the forest from the trees when it comes to what college football is going to look like. It's not going to look like traditional conferences. No. I and mean, then we're going to have the super conference thing, I think. And yeah. maybe those super conferences end up being the SEC and the Big Ten or the, the ESPN, the ESPN and conference the and the Fox conference. But all this is to say is that what the what you know, all these neighborhoods, XYZ, ultimately the ACC did what it had to do for its own survival, and that is to utilize the contract I don't know that, that they had. I don't I don't, I don't agree that it was the ACC either. In what sense? The voting faction did yeah. what it needed to do they, in order to survive. What they felt like they needed to yes. do. Let's put it which that way. That's not the ACC. Which includes Randy Woodson. No, but NCAA. what I'm separating here is while Jim Phillips likely steered the conversation sure. in the way that he wanted it to go, Yes, mm -hmm. I think ultimately the, the, the 10 schools that we can all agree on, right? Yeah. I, I'm not going to name them off the top of my head, but 
you would you would go, yeah, I get it. Why Pitt and Wake Forest are sitting here going, we want to add these three schools, A, because it gives us three million, extra $3 million a year. Yes. And it now gives us basically voting rights over Florida State, Clemson, Carolina. And it and maintains their relationship with ESPN. And it maintains their relationship with ESPN. And if they're both on the bubble, they'll have those schools to thank for it. Sure. So, so, so good yeah, for them. Yeah, for those 10 <laughs> schools, I understand. I also understand Florida State, Clemson, and Carolina going, we this don't want is to do not this. in our best interest. I, I, what I don't understand is NC State and Virginia Tech, or, and even Louisville. If, if we're, we're, if we're getting there, those <laughs> right. three schools, right, right, Louisville, yeah, those three brands yeah. who have a football brand should not have went along with this plan. Should not have. Yeah, straight up should not have. Yeah, and I, and we have definitely not heard from NC State and Randy Woods, and we've definitely not heard, and I don't believe we've heard from Louisville or Virginia Tech no. as to why they went along with this plan. That's where I say the voting block made the decision. I don't necessarily think it was an ACC decision. I think it was these individual schools, as we talked to John Curry last year, saying we we have to think one move ahead, and that move ahead was, well, we're going to lose Florida State and Clemson. What's the best way to protect ourselves? Yes. yes. And I think that was Which the conversation. gets to utilizing the contract that's in front of them. Yeah. And enacting their rights as part of the contract to add more schools and, and do X, Y, Z. And apparently they I didn't don't... read it very closely because they didn't see the leverage point on the 26 opt out. But here's yeah. the, but here, but okay, here's that's the, the, that's the hammer to me. And that's why I believe some of the stuff that this guy's putting but out. Here's yes. where I'll push back on whether or not that's a hammer. Okay. Because ESPN still needs the inventory for their initiatives coming forward, including a direct to consumer streaming service, the Spulu. In initiative that they've got coming up, which is this conglomerate of Fox and I forgot who else that's going to come together and give you a sports package, which is not designed for people like us who are already tied into our various streaming services. Yeah. It's for people who have never signed up for cable, who have never signed up for any of this stuff. And you're like, oh, okay, you're giving me this package. So right now, um, you know, shout out to David McKenzie, who always talks about market conditions. Well, the market conditions for ESPN and the ACC deal are actually pretty conducive for the ACC. I mean, for for ESPN. For ESPN. It's actually a good deal for ESPN all the way through 2036. So it actually is in their best interest to pick up the option because you've got all the teams at a cut rate. There's still, what, less than half of SEC payouts? Yeah. So yeah. It's it, still, it, for I, a, it, it, it slowly bleeds the league dry, even better. Rather than having assume, to renegotiate. But that assumes the status quo. Like well, once, once you well, lose Florida State and Clemson, you might it's as well all, be the American. Yes. You might as well be Correct. the 12. Yes. They, they still own those contracts, by the way. Yes. So it's not like... But they, you're going to have to renegotiate those deals, too. I, I think the ship has already sailed on the ACC being a right. major conference. Oh, I agree. Uh, yes. So I agree. what, what are that. they actually protecting at this point? That's, hey, look, that's my so thing. All, all, so that's why I it get back to... what Texas and Oklahoma left yeah. for me, and then when Oregon... Yeah. Like yeah. The, 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 reason why I bring, the reason why I bring this up is because I talked to somebody in the industry who floated out the 4D chess idea that if you're the ACC, you actually want ESPN to opt out of the contract yes, of and course take you do. it to market. Oh, okay. Because if you again, yes, no, you do. I think you do want. You're making Julio's making a face. They're not your friend. Like that's the thing the ACC needs to <laughs> uh, understand about the ESPN. They it are basic, not an ally to them. If right. anything, they have literally worked against them. So why for would a you calendar not? year? So why would you want? Right. Like they're not helping you. So <clears throat> stupid allergies. So why would you not do what I've preached for years? But you could end up being in the back twelve. You could. You could. That's that's the risk. Yeah. But again, but you're going to anyway. So if, what if does it you matter? know if you know that you're <laughs> fucked, right? Why would you not at least take a chance when and you're this is something slightly that was, less fucked? If you're as valuable <laughs> as you think, if you're Florida State and, and you're Clemson. as valuable as you think you are, if you're North Carolina, if you're mm -hmm. as valuable as you think you are, hey, you want the Carolina Duke game? Like, why just, would you I mean, not you know. invite that going to market? Yeah, and seeing if you could piece together multiple networks. Would yes. you cut some other people out too while you're at it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. I so, think they want them not to pick it <laughs> so up. So that's I why. Agree. That's why I'm not so convinced that that 2027 thing is some sort of death knell for the ACC. That like ESPN. Oh yeah, they want to get rid of it. No, because it's a great deal for them. No, it's yeah. an absolutely great deal for them. With right the status now. quo, though. Yes, and we understand, yes, and they could be saving quo. their yeah. pennies for whatever happens next. 
So again, I just wanted to put that back out there because I think that was something that was buried throughout all this stuff. Well, and like how much extra money do they have to be throwing around right now anyway? Like ESPN that, that, doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and that, that thread doesn't. necessitated some yeah, extra ESPN cash to be thrown. I'm like, mm, I don't know. We're, I, we're, in a weird, we're in a really weird inflection point with football properties, streaming services, and tech yeah. companies that are looking for inventory. Which is why if Florida State wasn't so hell-bent on getting the hell out of the ACC, if North Carolina was kind of like a little bit more like pushing towards, hey, let's rethink this sort of stuff, taking the rights to market is not the worst thing that can no, happen to the ACC. But definitely that's, not. But that's not where we're at. And this gets back to what I've been saying from the jump. And Florida State fans who get in my mentions and all stuff, it's going to happen. I'm like, oh, I get it. You want out. Yeah. You have decided. And you've been, this has been simmering and it's finally come to a boil over the last 10 years. You don't want to be here anymore. And I get it. And that's Honestly, fine. I understand it. But there was another way about this. And the biggest problem for the ACC was they tied together this long-term deal with the with ESPN. And the greatest thing that the Big Ten ever pulled off was doing shorter deals. Yes. So that every single time the brick price went up, they could take advantage they could of it. capitalize on that. Yep. So and, and the ACC and also was go, never in any of those windows to yeah. And the and, ACC was never in a window, right? No. And they could also add the brands, the Big Ten that they did, to, yes. to yes. increase their own price. It, that in, increased yeah. it even more, exactly. Whereas anyway. the ACC, I don't know that they increased their price at all. That's gonna wrap it up for today's show, Brandon. Thanks for hanging out. Of course. Uh, we will see you on Monday, and I cannot wait to show all of my DraftKings winnings on all my <laughs> ridiculous parlays from the golf weekend to Jillio. <laughs> He's going to eat his words. Cannot wait. We will see y'all <laughs> that he can't stand these. He cannot stand them. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm.